if I could teach the children of the Cove anything, it would be that everyone is created equal. Equality was not a concept that came naturally to the people of Karagat. The mountain hierarchy was as firmly established as their place in it. Me first! Wait your turn. No Alan waits for no tea. Creed Alan, go to the back of the line. Now. You see that dark spot in the center? It's called a nucleus. It gives the orders. Even a man as educated as Dr. McNeil was still a mountain man at heart. He was no closer to accepting Dan as an apprentice than when he arrived here. Give me some guidance as it relates to the treatment of inflammation of the lymphatic gland. Absolutely not. Miss Alice, Dr. McNeil allows Dan to read his medical journals, but he will not accept him as a student. It isn't fair. I don't believe it's about fairness. I believe Dr. McNeil is testing his mettle. Daniel Scott's a patient man. We must be as well. I'll return before the month is out. And uh, Mrs. Spencer, I appreciate your staying until Reverend Grantland returns. Yes, ma'am. And don't worry, I will hold down the fort till the preacher gets back from Lefty Branch. Honestly, Miss Alice, haven't I proven I can manage on my own? Miss Christie, she gonna open my present? No interrupting, Creed. <laughs> You need to convince me of that confidence, Miss Huddleston. Convince young Mr. Creed Allen. God keep you. Just you wait. When Miss Alice returns, she will see that I can run this mission on my own. Creed Allen will be a lamb, and Daniel Scott will be Dr. McNeil's apprentice. Anything is possible if you put enough effort into it. Anything. I'll get your boots. My boots? Why? For when you walk on water. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Smokies. When I left my city home to be a school teacher at a backwoods mission, I dreamed of adventure. I wasn't ready for the real challenges of life in these mountains. I'd have given up if not for the children. I came to Cutter Gap to teach, but they show me every day that I'm here to learn. Dr. McNeil, to allow Dan to languish one more day, one more hour, not only deprives him of the education he deserves, it deprives his people of the doctor they deserve. Just think of it. Men, women, and children suffering. I'm humorous. Mm -hmm. I'm right, you know. I have to be prepared, otherwise he will never take me seriously. He challenges everything I say to him. You don't know him. Oh, I've known Neil McNeil his whole life. You can't talk that man into anything. Nope. Sermonizing at him won't do it. What will? help everyone, me especially, at school, I mean. And I was, I was just thinking, oh, how long has it been since you've had a good home-cooked meal? I don't get visitors often. Oh, well, it looks fine for a bear. Well, 
that looks tasty. Uh, perhaps you could... Yes? Pick some flowers. Flowers? For the table. They'll smell nice. No, it's just right. You don't know how many people I see who've been poisoned by undercooked food. It's a messy business, I tell you. The bells look... I'm sorry, I'm not used to making suitable dinner conversation. It doesn't matter. It's not a suitable dinner. Well, my dinner may not impress you, but I promise my blackberry cobbler will. Well, I'm impressed by your presence here. It's so... friendly. I didn't know you had a phonograph. I've forgotten myself. No, that's not true. I just didn't realize how much I missed it. How much I missed so many things. It's like magic. It is. May I have the pleasure of this dance, ma'am? I didn't know you could waltz, Dr. McNeil. You should see my sword dance. <laughs> I can't tell you how much your visit has meant to me. You work too hard. You need someone who understands what you do. Someone who will be there for you when you're tired. Someone who you can talk to about your patients and who will help you care for them. Frankly, I can't understand how you've managed this long alone. Miserably, really. I think it's time you accepted a helpmate. I think you're right. Oh, he will work so hard for you. He? Why, Dan, Daniel Scott. Finally, you will get the help you need. And he idolizes you. He has sacrificed everything to come here and learn from you. You and Alice Henderson are like two peas in a pod. You come up with these ideas, and I have to carry them out. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You want to change Daniel Scott's life, but in order to do that, I have to change mine. And I won't do it. Not for burnt chicken, blackberry cobbler, and a cheap dance by the river. Are you suggesting that I'm I... I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying no. But, Dr. McNeil, I had Alice no... Alice Henderson and yourself brought Daniel Scott here, and you can send him home. Well, you are a stupid, stubborn Scott who doesn't deserve Daniel. And you're a rotten cook! Ugh. Dan, this is beautiful. It's for you. You're like a mama bear, always fighting for her cubs. I wish I had some words of encouragement for you. <laughs> 